Now, depending upon what you're talking about and the audience, you want to bring about change. Bring about change. Sometimes you just ask for it. That is, you say to your audience, I sense that uh, this has touched you. How many of you sense that uh, you need to do this? And then you see what happens. And then you need to come around until you ask the person, Richard, are you, are you going to do this? Are you going to give at least 50% application? Did I ask you in part one? Did I or didn't I? Yes. And did I end it with you assenting it to me or did I bring you so you had to tell him? You told him. The point isn't you obey me. Who am I? I'm nobody. But he is everybody. Bring him back up. Get out of the way and then get them to do it. Now sometimes you've got to get after them. In a good way. Don't you ever get after your kids? Sometimes you get after them. If they need to be rebuked, then do it. If they need to be loved, love them. If they need to cry together, help them cry. But whatever they need to do it, you do it. You serve them. You get out of the way, and then you do it. All right, box number five. That ends, then, that class. That's 50% of the time, then, you're applying it to them. Class ends. Box number five is next week. Box number five is next week. I used to wonder when earlier in my ministry, how come God moved this time and he didn't some other time? I never knew. I just decided it's not for me to know. <laughs> That's, it is for me to know. Number five, perform. That is, next week you want to find out, did they do it? This is where you want to evaluate, evaluate. And the climax of it all, the crown of it all, were they changed? Did they do it? So if I saw you next week, here's what I would say to you. How many of you taught at least one class? Raise your hand. And then you would raise your hand, and then I would say, how many of you who taught gave it at least 50% application? Raise your other hand. And if at least 70% of the people's hands both weren't up, I would scrap my whole lesson. Listen to me. I'd scrap the whole lesson, and I'd go back to work. Why? Listen to me. We are so messed up in our thinking. The point of it all isn't to give a new lesson. The point of it all is not to give a new lesson. The point is, did you change? If they're not changing, then why are you, getting, why are you leaving it? Go right on back to it. Well, they'll be bored. No, they won't. Learn how to review it and say it in different ways. And in our resource guide, we give you all kinds of ways to approach the same truth. If they're not doing it, you haven't caused them to hear. So tell them again and ask for a commitment. Don't ever give in to not going for life change again. Every time. What's the change I'm aiming for? Sometimes you just have to ask for it. Sometimes it's sweet and it's gentle, isn't it? And other times you hit stubbornness. Well, go after it. Don't give up on them. Now, let's see if we can give you a couple tips as we wrap up this session. Number one, what happens if you're saying here, you're sitting here and yourself, whoa, this is interesting, but I don't know how to do this. What should you do? Number one, here's a tip for you. Ask God to develop in you an applier's heart. Many of us have content hearts. True? So what do you do? You ask God to give it to you. Does he want you to have it? Yes. So ask for it. Ask for it. <laughs> I'll never forget it. A preacher at a conference came up to me. He was ticked when he heard all this stuff. And he flew back to California where he was pastoring. And uh, he had his secretary type out last week's sermon. And he got the yellow and the orange magic marker. He did it. 92% content. So he calls me on the phone. 
And he says, no, I'm 92%. What should I do? I said, uh, stop sinning. <laughs> so what do you mean stop sinning? He says, well, now you know you shouldn't be doing it. And for him to know it and still do it is a sin. What should I do? I said, well, how long do you preach? He said, I preach for, for 40 minutes. What should I do? I said, well, the first 20 minutes, give content. The second 20 minutes, give application. Can you do that? Oh, well, sure. So call me back next Monday. Why? Box five. Did he do it? Don't tell him. Did he do it? That's the point. This is the point. Not telling him. Did he do it? Change your head. Did he do it? <laughs> Monday calls up. I said to him, how did it go? And he said, um, interesting. I said, tell me, uh, what do you mean by interesting? He said, well, the first 20 minutes went great. I said, what happened in the next 20 minutes? <laughs> he said, uh, I didn't know what to say. So we ended quarter to 12. <laughs> he said, that's the first time in the church's 120-year history we got out quarter to 12. I said, Pastor, in other words, you couldn't think about an application? He said, no, I really couldn't. I just didn't know how to do that stuff. I said, Pastor, if you had trouble getting an application, just think about how hard it was for your people all these years. Amen. Yes. We're not changing because those of us who are called by God to teach aren't preaching for change and teaching for change. So he said, what should I do? I gave him a lot of suggestions. He said, first thing you do down, pastors, when we hang up, get on your knees and ask God to do something in your heart that's a work of God. Break your heart over this. Number two. Not only ask God for an applier's heart, but secondly, prepare applications in relationship to your students' needs. We have a whole law on this, and it's absolutely amazing how Jesus Christ did this. And we'll teach you how to do that in the law of need. Next, plan all parts of the lesson to contribute to the application. Star that one. What's the point of your teaching? Answer, the life change. How does the life, life change take place? Look up here. Life change takes place by teaching the truth, applying it, watching the spirit move in that, and then checking and see how it's going. Okay? If that's the target, then everything you're talking about hits the target. Plan all parts to hit the target. Therefore, don't make your lesson and say, now, what's my application? Make your application from the text and then plan all parts to hit it. Next. Lead your students beyond general applications to specific steps of obedience. There's a real tendency of people to make a mistake here. Your job is to give the principle, the text, the passage, the principle... The Spirit moves. Now, when the Spirit moves, He wants to move in an individual way and differently to Roger, Mrs. Williams, every person He wants to deal with differently. Don't fall in the trap of telling these ten ways to do it. You're playing the role of the Holy Spirit when you do that. Give this one as an illustration so people are saying, oh, that's what it looks like. And give this illustration, oh, that's what it looks like. Oh, now I understand what you're talking about and what it looks like. Then let the Spirit do that. Don't give it. Here's the ten things you're supposed to do. If God wanted the ten things, he'd have put it here. So don't you play God. Give it general principles. But listen to me now. Lead your class so they get the specifics. Don't tell them. Lead them. What's the Lord saying to you about this? What's he want you to do? Trust God. He'll tell them. Just ask the question. Next. Illustrate the application with scripture, history, personal experience, and the, believe it or not, imagination. Imagination. Applications come alive when you illustrate them. You show them in a picture. 
And in our resource guide, we teach you how to get applications, illustrations, excuse me, how to get illustrations, where to find them, what makes a good one, how do you find them in your own life, how do you know where to use them and when to use them. It's beyond what we can talk about in this course, but it's all in the resource guide. Next, employ an appropriate style when calling for commitment. If you've got to rebuke someone or the audience, then go rebuke them. If they don't... If they're just tender, then do it gently. And S, strengthen applications with student accountability. Have them committed to themselves. Have the, the audience break into groups of two and let them share with each other what they're going to do. Have them write you a note. Have them pray to God. There's a whole lot of different ways to get accountability to take place. You know, there's a verse. Don't close your notebook. Just leave it right there while I close with an illustration. There's a verse that when churches go through building programs, they oftentimes use on a white banner in front of the church with red letters. And the, the verse is, without a blank, the people blank. What's the verse? Yeah. Without a vision, the people perish. And what we mean by that is without a dream, the people kind of get apathetic. And without a goal, like a building program, uh, we don't really do what we should be doing. Well, the problem is the verse has nothing to do with that. When it says without a vision, the word there never in the Hebrew language means a dream or a goal or a program. The word vision is the same Hebrew word in your Bible when it says, and this is the vision of Isaiah the prophet. The vision is the direct revelation from God. This is the vision today. Without a vision, without the scriptures, the people perish. That Hebrew word perish is amazing. It does not mean die. It doesn't mean to lose heart. It has something totally different in its meaning. It's only used a few times in the Bible. The clearest time to help you and I understand it tonight is when Moses was up on top of Mount Sinai getting the commandments. God said, you better go back down because at the base of the mountain, what are the people doing? They're filled with immorality, idolatry. They're running wild. They're filled with nakedness. All those words are trying to interpret the word perish. That verse literally says, friends, without the scriptures, rightfully taught, the people run wild. Now, are we finding the people running wild or not? Well, yes, they are. They're running wild because the Scripture's not being taught for life change. Instead, it's being taught for content. Jesus said it best in Matthew 28 when he said, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, watch it. Watch it. Teaching them the information. Is that what it says? No, it says, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. Now look at that. Teaching them to do it, to do everything that I've commanded you. Teach so they do it. Don't teach so they know it. The second you and I start teaching it for life change, it has power. And it brings about holiness and sanctifications and marriages that go back together again. And kids that get their lives together. It's amazing. No, it's not amazing. It's supernatural. Think about the people you teach. Think about your children at home. Have you been bringing about life change in their lives? Or are there some people out there who are running wild because the person God has put as their teacher is withholding the power of Almighty God by not teaching it for life change? If this is you, may you sense the utter responsibility. May your heart as mine cry out for Almighty God to use you when you teach His Word in such a way that it really changes lives. If that really captures your heart, then right now it's time for you to make a commitment.